Hi, welcome to Advantage. My name is Marie Hunsinger and I'm going to be your professor for Introduction to Sociology. And so our previous video we talked about the process of socialization. And for sociologists, socialization isn't just a one and done thing. Socialization happens across your life as you enter in new roles, new responsibility, new stages of life. So today we're going to be talking about the life course perspective, which helps sociologists understand how people develop and adapt throughout their life stages. Okay, so the first stage of life is, of course, childhood, which happens between ages um, well, zero to 12. And childhood is a relatively new stage of life, uh, meaning that we didn't always consider childhood to be the separate stage. So it used to be that children were considered mini adults and it wasn't a separate uh, life developmental stage. Today, however, we see children as vulnerable and innocent and in needing of our protection. But in the past, we would put children to work in factories. Um, children would work as farmhands, help their parents you know, with chores and labor. And children didn't necessarily go to school. Maybe upper class children did, but the common or the lower class children would mostly help out with chores uh, in agrarian societies. However, as school started to become mandatory and we didn't need people to work as much, you know, we needed primarily adults, so the very young and the very old didn't have to work, we started to make school compulsory. And this uh, started to happen in the early 1900s. And today, in most states, children need to go to school until about age 16 and sometimes longer. And it's not atypical for a young adult to go to school well into their 20s. So this is an important stage of socialization, birth to 12. In this stage, you are having initial identity formation and you are learning the basics of society. So you're sponging up, soaking up all of these different norms and values and expectations from a variety of sources, from your family, from your peers at school, your teachers, movies and television shows, religion, if your family's religious. So this is a very important uh, stage in development. Education. This is an agent of socialization that is very important and one that you interact with from preschool all the way up into your college years or beyond even. And even if you decide to work in education, which is a large employer, then it will affect you most of your adult life too. So the agent of socialization includes everything from primary school to high school to college to tutors, SAT, and the college board are all part of the agent of socialization of education. So in school, it has the important function of teaching you skills that are functional for life, such as arithmetic, reading, and writing, but it also teaches you social skills. It also teach, often teaches you rules about gender, for example, separating boys and girls in different health classes when they talk about reproduction. So school doesn't just teach you the basics to function in society, but it also teaches you norms and how to socialize and be with other people. Also it teaches you norms about patriotism. So think about uh, saying the Pledge of Allegiance every morning and learning about U.S. history. During this time, also children's toys and books and television shows are really important agents of socialization as well. And you can really distinguish between how boys and girls are socialized by the types of toys that they're encouraged to play with. So generally, boys are encouraged to play with toys that develop their spatial skills, such as building blocks and Legos, and they tend to be engaging and more goal-oriented and decision-making and play that encourages leadership skills. Well, girls are often given toys that are meant to develop their domestic skills or caretaking skills. For example, an easy bake oven, baby dolls, or sometimes given toys so they dress up, you know, in feather boas or play makeup. So the, the toys that we give children often help socialize children into their adult roles later in life. So girls, again, also often given toys that encourage expressive roles, while boys are given toys that uh, encourage instrumental roles. Children's books also are responsible for teaching children morals, values, also messages about gender, messages about social class, language, and other aspects of culture. So take, for example, my favorite series of books growing up was the Berenstain Bears. And in the Berenstain Bears, Mama wears a dress and Sister wears pink 
and they're bears, but you can tell that they live in a suburban middle-class suburb. And they often, you know, teach children morals about not cheating. One of my favorites is when Mama Bear gets a job and leaves the household and basically the whole family falls apart without her being at home. So it teaches children, you know, the roles of mom and dad and, and gender. So society is slowly catching up to the fact that toys and books reinforce traditional gender norms and roles. And so we're starting to see more and more diverse options being offered for children. So the next phase of life is also a newish stage called adolescence, which describes people who are in ages between 13 and 17 or 13 to 18, depending on what research you consider. Again, this is not a natural age division. It used to be that you went from childhood to adulthood without this transition phase in between. And the gap between childhood and adulthood was really created during the Industrial Revolution. Again, when children and young adults were not really needed in the workforce, factory jobs were mostly reserved for adult men. And so more and more young adults were going to school. And at this time, education becomes more and more important in order to function in society, get a job. So adolescence, this can be a very difficult time in life as you are swinging uh, back and forth between childhood and adulthood. So during this time, you start to feel like an adult, you start to try to assert your independence, but you're often still subject to your parents' rules. And often you're, you're trying to figure out who you are, your identity, what you value, what you believe, your contributions that you wanna make in life. So you may experiment with different types of identities. Maybe you're a punk rocker one week, maybe you're a, a preppy person the next week. So you're trying to figure out where your, your niche is. Adolescents often develop their own subcultures, and during the 1950s, corporations started to realize that adolescents had big buying power. And so you start to see music and clothing and products targeted specifically to adolescents. So mass media is a really important agent of socialization for people in this life stage. Young people tend to spend a lot of time watching television, at this age group, 18 to 24, goes to movies more often than other age groups. And they often spend more time on social media. So most recent research shows that Snapchat and Instagram are especially popular, those social media apps, with 18 to 24 year olds, while older adults tend to gravitate towards Facebook and YouTube. And even though with the, with the rise of the internet, you would think that maybe television watching would go down, and it has somewhat, but it's still pretty stable with, with the average household watching almost eight hours of television a day in 2017. And also during this time, uh, peers become a very important agent of socialization as well. Adolescents are susceptible to things like peer pressure and to trying to fit into what's cool, what's acceptable. And oftentimes, adolescents can have conflicting messages between the adults in their lives, like their teachers and their parents and their peers. And a peer is just anyone who shares equal status to you. So it could be your coworkers, it could be your classmates, you know, people on your sports team, but a peer would not be your parents, for example, your teachers or your boss, because they have more authority over you. So most people meet their peers um, through school, through clubs, sports, and later on during the workplace. So peers often reinforce behaviors that are stressed by parents in schools, for example, gender policing. If you ever watch boys and girls, if a boy, for example, breaks a gender norm, oftentimes it's his peers that correct him, not necessarily the teachers or other adults. And Adolescents can receive conflicting messages. So maybe you have peer pressure to start drinking at age 16 from your classmates, but your parents and your teachers tell you to wait till you're 21 or to not touch alcohol at all. And so you have to kind of deal with these conflicting expectations. So that concludes today's video on socialization of the life course between childhood and adulthood and the different socialization agents accompanying those different life stages. Tune in for the next video when we talk about adulthood and older age. Thank you.